Hey, this is Austin with Points Unknown TV with another episode on my Yamaha Tenere 700, all in the name of Inspiring Adventure. I've gone through my top five accessories and now I'm going into detail on the install and a brief review for each one of my top five first must-do accessories and upgrades on the Yamaha Tenere 700. Continuing on today, I'm going to be talking about heated grips, which are critical, I think, especially when you want to get in that early spring riding and there's still snow on the ground, as you can see. For heated grips, I selected the Oxford Heaters Premium Adventure Heated Grips. This is a uh, grip that I am uh, very familiar with as I put it on uh, several adventure bikes in the past. And I've always had good luck with these grips. I feel like the install is straightforward. Um, the, the hardware it comes with and the wiring kit and everything is a, is a premium quality. And the grips themselves feel good and uh, provide a good amount of, of grip and longevity. So I went with these again and um, yeah, let's get them on the bike. So what's in the box? Inside the box, We've got plastic. We've got the grips themselves and the wiring kit. The controller. And the controller has three electrical connectors on it that connect to uh, both the grips and the power wiring harness. This is the powering wiring harness. You can see it's got leads going to the battery. Uh, I'm not going to connect it to the battery. I'm going to connect it to the, the harness up front, but uh, that's typically how you would do it. And then the two grips themselves, throttle side and clutch side. A mounting bracket to mount the controller. It sits on it. And some glue and zip ties for uh, making the grip stick and uh, zip ties for keeping all the wires together. So that's what's in the box. Before I even get into the grips themselves, I need to get prepped for wiring the power for the grips. Yamaha is extremely helpful here and provides an accessory power plug for just this purpose. The OEM circuit is protected with a 10 amp fuse and is switched by the key, so it's perfect for these heated grips which use roughly 60 watts, which is 5 amps when powered at 12 volts. The OEM accessory connector I'll be using is located under the right side panel. To get at it, I'm going to take the right side panel off. This is accomplished by first removing the three T30 Torx bolts from the side of the panel. And then removing the three T30 Torx push rivets from inside the fork tunnel. The three bolts are out here. And the three clips are out on the front. This just lifts right out. And you're left with that. Then you can disconnect the turn signal. They're lifting up on a little clip there. Thumbnail. There you go. And that is out. Right side of the bike. Two pin, two amp connector. Three pin, 10 amp connector. There we go. That in, there it goes. And this has three wires coming into it, but they're both positive. Now it's got the dummy plug that if you have terminals for, you can use um, just by filling in the back there. Now, if we look at this connector closely, we've got two reds here and then the black. And I believe the two reds are identical. Here, looking at this, we've got red here, red here, and black on that side. Red, red, black. So normally I would actually cut off that connector and just use a more generic connector. Um, but because it comes with a dubbing connector um, that's functional, just by pulling the caps there, and I do have some spare uh, connectors for the Japanese style HB connectors that'll fit, uh, I'm going to use those instead and, and so that I can use the factory connector and not have to mess with cutting off the uh, factory connector and utilizing those short wires just a little cleaner. Because I'm using the factory connection to bike power up towards the handlebars, 
I don't need the long power connector fuse and battery ring terminals that come with the heated grip wiring circuit. So I'll just cut that off. Should have paid better attention to which side was which, but uh, if I look at this carefully, I can see that the red side that has the fuse, the red side has writing. So that's this side. For the terminals I need to use, it's the, uh, the male terminals are the ones that go on this wiring harness because the female is already on the bike. Um, but before I put the terminals on, I need to remember to make sure I put these little grommets on because that will allow me to seal up the holes. The factory connector is a three pin Sumitomo MT090 sealed connector. You can order the companion connection from retailers like Cycle Terminal online, or just order the male connecting pins to continue to use this connector. However, you can also just purchase a multi-pack of more generic waterproof connectors for less than half the cost and cut off the factory connector entirely. The choice is yours. Because I'm E for a little out of security, I always solder the connections just a little bit. And you have to be really careful because if you put too much solder on, they won't, uh, they won't fit in the socket. Just to be sure I was wiring the correct socket on the connector, I marked the negative side with a blue marker. Then I carefully inserted each male connector into the socket. The positive wire with the writing on it goes into the plain socket and the negative wire goes into the blue marked socket. If everything is aligned correctly, you'll hear a very satisfying click as you insert the pin into the connector. Push the sealing glands in to make the connection waterproof and this should be good to go. Next, let's move on to removing the factory grips. My preferred method for removing grips has always been compressed air. Seems to work the best. Just get it worked in here. The throttle side is only a little bit different given that the throttle is there, but we still use the same method, compressed air. On the left side of the bike, the grip that says L is the one we want. And it just slides right on. I like to test fit everything first before I glue it, so I'm not even gonna bother with gluing it right now. I'm just gonna get it all set up and ready, and then I'll glue it on. Throttle side, we know what it is because it says R on the cable. So one thing to keep in mind when you're positioning these is, uh, is, is the position of the brake and whether or not this part of it is gonna interfere with, with the braking action. And I've actually, I usually position this down low, but I kind of like it up here on the top um, because that way when I'm going full throttle, it moves out of the way of the brake versus moving it into the way of the brake. And we still have plenty of good braking action. And the cables can then run right along the throttle cables, which also seems to be kind of nice. So I think I'm gonna run that. Once everything is positioned to your satisfaction, it's time to glue everything into position. There are different opinions on what glue to use, but I just use the super glue that comes with the Oxford kit, and that has worked fine for me on other bikes. Pull the grip off for the last time and carefully apply the glue. Keep in mind it dries very quickly, so once you start applying, you have to move efficiently. I apply the glue to both the handlebar itself and to the inside of the grip. Once applied, quickly slide the grip back onto the handlebar as smoothly as possible to avoid getting it stuck halfway. The procedure is the same for the other side. As I said before, the glue dries very quickly. So once the grips are glued into position, we're ready to finish off the wiring. Back on the right side of the bike, under the right fairing panel, we can take the factory socket that we wired up earlier and connect it to the factory power connector on the bike. Then we need to run the heated grips power to the controller and each of the grips themselves. Here the Oxford wires are well labeled and the waterproof connectors feel tight and secure. Routing of the wiring across the bike is mostly personal preference, but just be sure that none of the wires interfere with the steering or will get in the way of normal riding. A little bit of planning and a few zip ties as well as some electrical tape should do the trick. I installed the metal mount for the heated grip controller to the mirror mount on the left side of the bike. I like having the controller on the left side of the bike so that I can use the controls without taking my hands off the throttle. Remove the 8mm bolt from the mirror mount to attach the mounting plate. Once installed, it required a little bit of bending to put the controller into the correct position for me. But all in all, it seems to work fine. The controller itself attaches to the mounting plate with double-sided tape that also comes with the kit. Right, let's see if this thing fires up. I 
All right. That's a good sign. Reinstall the side panel using the reverse of the steps that we did before. And that's it, we are done. All that's left to do is to head out for a cold weather ride and enjoy nice warm hands. Thanks for watching this episode of Points Unknown TV. For more Tenere 700 videos, general motorcycle maintenance tips and tricks, as well as DIY van life and international adventure inspiration, please subscribe to the Points Unknown channel. We'll see you on down the trail.